Coming up, a federal judge has ruled that writer E. Jean Carroll is allowed to continue on with her second lawsuit against Trump, with the former president firing back with a lawsuit of his own. And the NFL is cracking down on its players violating the league's sports gambling rules, which stars were caught and will no longer be playing in the 2023 season. The rundown starts now. This is Straight Arrow News bringing you unbiased straight facts. Thanks for joining us. I'm Kara Rucker. A federal judge has rejected a request from former President Trump to dismiss a second lawsuit brought against him by writer E. Jean Carroll. Carroll was awarded $5 million after Trump was found liable for sexual abuse and defamation last month. After the verdict, Trump doubled down on his innocence at a CNN town hall, prompting Carroll to file the second defamation lawsuit, this time seeking $10 million in damages. Trump had tried to get this one thrown out on the grounds that he is entitled to absolute presidential immunity, his statements were not defamatory, and that his statements were opinion protected by free speech rights. Earlier this week, Trump countersued Carol, claiming she has libeled him by continuing to insist that he raped her, even after a jury found otherwise in the original verdict. New fallout a week after the Wagner Group staged a rebellion against Russia. We've now learned a Russian general has been detained in response. General Sergei Surovakin, the deputy commander of the Russian group of forces fighting in Ukraine, hasn't been seen since the start of the rebellion when he posted a video urging an end to it. It isn't clear where Surovakin is being held or if he's been charged with anything. Wagner Group chief Yevgeny Prigozhin has spoken positively of Surovakin while criticizing other Russian military leaders. This week, the New York Times reported that U.S. officials believe Surovakin had advanced knowledge of Prigozhin's plan to stage the rebellion. What I would tell you is right now, um, we continue to see some elements of the Wagner Group in Russian-occupied territory in Ukraine. But in terms of the future of Wagner Group, that's, that's really a question best addressed by Russia, which of course, as you know, funds uh, the Wagner Group. The U.S. and the Netherlands are restricting their semiconductor chips from being made in China in an effort to prevent their technology from being used to strengthen China's military. Dutch machines that make advanced processor chips will be required to have an export license before they can be sold overseas starting in September. By doing this, China's access to equipment that can be used in military technology will be largely out of reach. The Netherlands said the new regulations are in the best interest of national security. The Biden administration made a similar move back in October, imposing their own export controls and urging others to follow suit. There is unrest in the country of France as thousands of protesters have swept the streets for a third night following the fatal police shooting of a 17-year-old that was captured on video. More than 600 people were arrested on Thursday as the protests have become unruly. More than half of those arrests taking place in and around Paris. Buildings have been set ablaze, dozens of cars set on fire, marches have reportedly turned violent, and fireworks thrown at police sets the scene of fury raging in the streets of France. On Tuesday, police conducted a traffic stop resulting in the killing of a 17-year-old male. Video that surfaced on social media shows two officers, a gun drawn, and as the 17-year-old driver attempts to drive away, an officer is seen firing his gun. It's tragic. We're still talking about human life, so I don't know. I'm saddened for the family. I think there were faults on both sides, and the state has a responsibility. They should be managing this, since it's starting to get out of hand. But I think that starting a revolt like what happened yesterday will not change things. The NFL is cracking down on players violating the league's gambling policy, suspending Indianapolis Colts cornerback Isaiah Rogers and defensive end Rashad Berry at least through the entire 2023 season. Following the suspensions, the Colts waived both players from their rosters. Free agent defensive end Demetrius Taylor received the same punishment from the NFL. Tennessee Titans offensive lineman Nicholas Petit-Frere also received a six-game suspension for betting on non-NFL games at team facilities. Petit-Frere said all of his sports betting was done legally, but since he made them at team facilities, that's why he was reprimanded by the league. This is a continuation of the league cracking down on gambling, suspending five other players back in April. 
the league views, you know, these gambling uh, issues as a significant threat to the integrity of their competition, that the league does not want players betting on their own games, whether they're betting to on their team to win or on their team to lose. Either way, the league, you know, there's a that raises a variety of concerns. A Texas grand jury has determined rapper Travis Scott will not be held criminally responsible for a crowd rush at a music festival that killed 10 people. Scott was performing at Astroworld in November of 2021 when a crowd of about 50,000 people began pushing toward the stage. Victims between the ages of 9 and 27 all died from compression asphyxia. More than 2,400 other concert goers required medical treatment. Hundreds of lawsuits accused the rapper on stage of negligence. Following the grand jury's decision, a lawyer for Scott said Scott is ready to look forward. These are your top stories. Thanks for joining us on The Rundown. We're on a mission to bring back trustworthy journalism by serving only you, not an agenda. Be sure to check out more of our work at straightarrownews.com. And you can also find the latest rundown episodes available as a podcast on all major podcast platforms. We'll see you back here next week. Until then, I'm Kara Rucker. Have a great day.